Welcome to another Meta Snapshot Breakdown. The meta has become quite stale leading up to the release of Forged in the Barrens. While players continue to experiment with different archetypes, the highest level of competition sees the same decks over and over again. Sadly, Blizzard has confirmed that there won't be balance changes until at least the week leading up to the newest expansion, so we'll all need to get used to this meta. On the bright side, there are quite a few different viable archetypes, leaving most players to have at least one deck that they're comfortable playing. Before we dive into the top decks in the meta, we'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel and like the video. It helps us keep our channel running, and we always appreciate the support. Now without further ado, let's jump into Tier 1. Leading off Tier 1 this time around is Enrage Warrior. This archetype has practically been a top of the meta since its inception. The deck abuses the power of Risky Skipper alongside other cards such as Armorsmith and Bloodsworn Mercenary to blow aggro out of the water, and can use cards such as Shield of Honor to outpressure slower archetypes. If you've taken to ladder in the past year or so, you'll have faced off against this archetype and are probably tired of it. Luckily, the archetype stands to lose a lot in rotation, and will finally spend its last month in standard. Enrage Warrior has a good matchup against aggressive decks, and will abuse them when queued in two. It also has a great matchup against Stealth Rogue, as it can remove their opponent's tempo while developing their own. As for bad matchups, Enrage Warrior tends to struggle against both Librem Paladin and ETC Warrior. The Paladin will pressure the Warrior early and deny their burst with taunts, and the Warrior will simply do nothing until you fatigue. Next Next up in Tier 1 is Tempo Rogue. This archetype is also guilty of consistently sitting at the top of the meta despite the previous nerfs that it faced to Edwin. The archetype is consistent and has access to many different scam cards, giving it the chance to find a win out of positions unlike any other class. Tempo Rogue is also one of the archetypes that has a relatively balanced matchup spread, making its good matchup not too favored and its bad ones not horrendous. We expect to see Tempo Rogue perform well until rotation, and let's be honest, it'll probably find life following the rotation as well. Tempo Rogue has a great matchup against OTK Demon Hunter, and can outpressure them with consistent threats leading to a win. As for bad matchups, it tends to find itself struggling more against the more control-heavy archetypes on ladder, such as ETC Warrior. Tier 1 only features two archetypes this time. The majority of decks in the meta are fairly well balanced, and only some outliers stand atop the crowd. We don't expect to see a massive change in the foreseeable future, and aside from minor meta shifts, this should be a solid representation of the top decks for ladder. Next up is Tier 2. This tier features quite a few decks in it, as they're all relatively equal in power. This time, we'll just be taking a look at the top three decks in the tier. Before we continue, we'd like to remind you to visit our website at TempoStorm.com for the rest of the meta report. Leading off tier two is Librem Paladin. If you're a fan of Penflingers, then this is the archetype for you. This deck makes use of the consistently powerful Librem Paladin to generate pressure, while using Penflingers to burn down the opponent from high health totals, or to ping off the opposing minions. Librem Paladin is an archetype that found a core build relatively early in the set and stuck to it. Aside from a few slots for tech cards, the rest of the deck is relatively autocomplete and builds itself. Librem Paladin has a good matchup against warrior decks or greedier Highlander decks, such as Druid, thanks to the endless pressure and threats. As for bad matchups, the deck finds itself struggling to gain a foothold against OTK Demon Hunter or the hyper-aggressive token Druid. Next up in Tier 2 is Highlander Priest. While the majority of streamers and pro players are vocal about their disdain for Priest, the deck is clearly powerful and can be very powerful in the right hands. Just be careful playing Priest, as you may get hateful friend requests, but if you have a thick skin and like control decks, don't hesitate to give it a try. It's important to note that lately Zephyrus the Great has been acting a little weird and hasn't always been working as intended, but you'll probably be fine. Highlander Priest has a pretty well-balanced matchup spread, with its best coming from ETC Warrior. In this matchup, Priest can just essentially pass every turn to play around the OTK and use Plague of Death to answer the Rattle Gore, leaving the Warrior without a win condition. As for bad matchups, Priest tends to struggle against both forms of Rogue, as the consistent pressure through aggression or threats is often too much for little ol' Anduin. The last deck we'll be taking a look at today is Stealth Rogue. This archetype has stirred up quite the storm on Twitter lately, with players practically begging for nerfs to it. While it might not feel oppressively strong to play against, it often can feel uninteractive, leaving a sour taste in the mouth of opponents. On the bright side for ladder grinders, the deck is extremely fast, so if you're looking for a fast climb, this is the deck for you. Stealth Rogue performs best against greedy decks, with both Highlander Priest and Druid having a horrendous time in this matchup. On the reverse side of things, any warrior deck making use of Risky Skipper and Armorsmith will be the bane of Valera's existence, and will require a relatively bad draw from the warrior player. The Dark Moon Fair is all but finished, and will be coming to a close shortly. The newest expansion, Forged in the Barrens, will hopefully be released by the end of March, alongside the new core set and the annual rotation. Only time will tell how the new meta will shape up, but it's certain to be exciting. We can't wait 
wait to see what the new year brings, and we likely won't have to wait much longer. We hope you enjoyed this Meta Snapshot breakdown. If you did, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more content to come, and to leave a like rating on the video to help us out. We hope you're as excited for the new year as we are, and we can't wait to bring you the first Meta Snapshot for Forged in the Barrens. Until next time! Yeah.